Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Easy PLC Solder Robot PLC programming. Now the Machine Simulator, or MS, is part of the Easy PLC software suite. It has many built-in machines that are used to show different programming techniques. The Solder Robot example is just one of these machines. This will demonstrate a sequencer robot example. The logic will step through different steps in order to perform the task. In our case, four rivets are welded using a robot. We will be using a Click Plus PLC and the Click programming software to program this Easy PLC Machine Simulator solder robot. This will be done using Modbus TCP, which is an Ethernet connection for communication. The program will control the stopping and welding of the boxes. Using the five steps for programming development, we will show how the sequencer is programmed. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. The first step of PLC program development is to determine what must be done. Start the Easy PLC Machine Simulator or MS. Select the Start button on the main page or select Machines from the main menu at the top of the Machine Simulator window. All of the available machines will now be displayed. Scroll down and click on the solder line. This is the example that we will be programming. To the left of the screen inf information will be displayed on what the machine needs to do as well as the inputs and outputs required for the program. It basically says manage the solder robot to solder the four rivets in the boxes. Use the inductive switches in the cylinder to stop the boxes and start the soldering. The robot is managed by the PLC using the analog inputs and outputs. The PLC analog outputs 0 to 4 drive the 5 axis robot. Analog inputs 0 to 4 inform the PLC about the current robot axis position. Now the machine simulator has a demo mode for the built in machines. This will allow you to watch the operation of a solder robot. Select the demo mode for the solder robot. The solder robot demo mode will operate showing you the basics of operation. Now move around the 3D virtual environment. There are three icons at the top window that will show, show you how to move around this 3D environment. The first icon is the default selection. This will allow you to move around without bumping into the objects. The first person mode will mimic a person in your 3D learning world. The last icon will automatically show you around this virtual environment. Once we have a good understanding of what must be done, we can now move on to the next step in the PLC program development. The view I.O. at the bottom of the machine simulator window will display the inputs and outputs required for the solder robot example. While still in demo mode, you can see the operation of the digital inputs and outputs. So the PLC digital outputs, number one would be the solder. This will turn the robot welder output uh, on or off. Number two is the work parts creator. This will move the conveyor and make a box. Number three is the push cylinder advance. This will extend the cylinder to stop the box in the position to weld. Position cylinder back. This will retract the cylinder to allow the finished weld box to continue on the conveyor. The digital inputs or the PLC digital inputs. We have number one, the inductive switch one. This is the located closest to the cylinder and will detect the box for position on the conveyor. Number two, the push cylinder advance. This extend cylinder will determine the position of the cylinder. Then we have a push cylinder back. This is the retraction sen sensor on that same cylinder. And we have an inductive switch number two. This is the first sensor the box will activate as it moves along the conveyor. It is used for positioning of the box. So once we have that inductive switch, then we can hit the cylinder to stop the box. So the 
we can select the analog inputs and outputs in order to see the control of the five axis robot. In the PLC analog outputs control the position of the robot. The analog input reports the current position for the robot. Now the P easy PLC solder robot example will require the four digital outputs and four digital inputs. And if you're unsure as what an output or input is doing, we will start the solder robot in start mode. Then select the view IO at the bottom middle of the machine simulator window. You can now manually run the solder robot application without any control or PLC connected. Click on the outputs will allow you to manually turn them on. You can then monitor the inputs to see their operation. Now the reset button on the bottom of the machine simulator will reset the scene back to the start. So you must know all the inputs and outputs and what they're doing in order to continue and develop now the next operation, which is the logical sequence of operation. A flowchart sequence table or detailed sequence description is used to fully understand the process that needs to be controlled. It must also answer questions like the following. What happens when electrical power and or pneumatic air is lost? What happens when the input and outputs devices fail? Or do we need redundancy? This step is where you'll spend most of your time. Understanding everything about the operation will save you time. It will help prevent you from continuously rewriting the PLC program logic. Knowing all these answers up front is vital in the development of the PLC program. The solder robot machine will turn on the part creator that'll start our conveyor. And if the conveyor proximity sensors do not detect the box or the current box welded rivets have been completed, that's when we start that conveyor. The robot will be in the home position, which is back from the conveyor belt. Now, as the box is detected on inductive switch number two, the cylinder will extend and the part creator output will remain on to position the box between the two inductive switches. Once the box is in the correct position, the robot will move to the first rivet position. Once this has been verified with the analog input, the solder uh, output or weld will be activated for three seconds. When the weld is complete, return the robot to the home position. Once verified in the home position, move the robot, robot to the second rivet position and repeat the welding for three seconds. This operation will repeat until all the rivets have been welded. The robot will return home after each of the weld operations. Once the rivets have been welded, the robot will return home and the cylinder will retract. The box is complete and the conveyor or the part the creator will start sending the finished box down the conveyor belt and allowing a new box to be positioned. This cycle will continually cycle. Now a PLC programmer must know everything about the sequence and operation of the machine before programming. Ask questions or view existing documentation to ensure that you know the logical steps to the machine operation. Writing the ladder logic code for the PLC example will be the next step in our program development. We will be using the Click programming software with the Click Plus PLC. The Click series will take you through installing the program, communicating with the controller, providing instructions, and addressing the controller. Select the COM port under the main menu, Setup. Select the Setup on port 1, which is the Ethernet port. Please make a note of the static IP address that we will be using for our Click PLC. This will be used later to connect the PLC, uh, Easy PLC machine simulator. Close these windows and click on the Modbus TCP Setup. This is located on the main menu, Setup. 
the enabled Modbus TCP server is selected by default. Ensure that this is chosen so that the Easy PLC Machine Simulator can communicate to the Click PLC on default 502 port. Select OK. Using the address picker, select X101. Select the Display Modbus address on the bottom right hand side. This will show you the Modbus addresses for the inputs from the Easy PLC Machine Simulator. The output Modbus addresses to the Easy PLC Machine Simulator can be seen by selecting Y101. Now DS1 to DS5 will control the robot and DS11 to DS15 will report back the position of the robot. Here are the Modbus addresses. Now we will need these Modbus addresses when we test our PLC ladder, ladder logic in the next step of our program development. Now, the, now, now, now we'll look at the solder robot click PLC ladder logic. Now the first two lines of ladder logic will control the box creator and the conveyor. This output will do both functions. A time delay is used when switch 2 is made and the conveyor turns off. This will give enough time to align the boxes between the two switches. Ladder rungs 4 to 6 will control the push pneumatic cylinder. The cylinder will extend on the leading edge of switch number 2 and retract on the solder complete bit. The solder start bit will control when the robot starts the soldering sequence. Solder complete will reset on the trailing edge of switch number 1. Now DS100 is used to track the current sequence number of the robot. Upon the first scan of the PLC, this will be reset the logic to initial position of 0. This is the robot's home position. When we have the solder start signal, the box welding is not complete, we will now see the position counter. The home position parameters are then copied to the robot output. A time delay of 0.5 seconds is used to ensure that the robot has had a chance to move to its position. Each robot axis is compared to the home position. If they are all equal, then the robot sequence is incremented by 1. At position 1, the values are copied into the robot output registers. A delay of 0.2 milliseconds allows the robot to move the first, move the five axes. Comparing each of the robot axis positions will then start a timer. This will turn on an internal bit for the duration. This internal bit will then be later used to turn on the solder output. Once this welding time has expired, the robot will move to position two. This is the robot's home position again. This pattern repeats until all of the rivets have been welded. Once the rivets have been welded and the robot is at home, the solder complete bit will be set. This will move the completed box down the conveyor and a new one now can be welded. Modbus address registers are a 16-bit value. We see the following for the first rivet position in the machine simulator demo mode. The value minus 13.856 will not translate using Modbus. The Easy PLC Machine Simulator Modbus driver can correct this value so we can communicate to any Modbus capable controller. There are parameters that can be used for the analog values using the Modbus driver. The formula is analog subtract plus the analog machine simulator value times the analog scaled value. So the value of minus 13. 0.856 from a Modbus capable PLC would be 100 minus 13.856 times 100, which is equal 8,614. The home position of zero in the machine simulator would be 100 plus zero, which would be 100 times 100 equals 10,000. This ability in the Easy PLC Modbus driver allows all of the test scenes in the machine simulator to be programmed. The last rung of the program will take each of the internal bits triggered by individual timers during the sequence and control the solder output. Save and transfer the PLC program to the Click PLC Plus. Ensure that the PLC is in run mode. We can now move on to the last step of our program development. 
The last step of our PLC program development is testing the program. We will be using Modbus TCP on our Click Plus PLC to communicate with the Easy PLC Machine Simulator. Call up the solder robot machine in start mode. The status of the machine simulator will be at the bottom of the screen. Currently we have no PLC connected. Select IO drivers on the middle bottom of the screen. The PLC, the Easy PLC driver is selected by default. Under the driver download menu, select Modbus driver. This driver will communicate Modbus TCP, Ethernet, and Modbus RTU serial. Select the down arrow on the driver's name. Select the configure button. We can now enter the information for our Modbus driver. Select TCP IP. This means the ethernet port on a computer will communicate with the PLC. The digital inputs from MS to the Click Plus PLC will be 8,225 to 8,229. This will start at address 8,224 due to the offset of one. Digital outputs from the machine simulator or MS to the Click Plus PLC will be 100033 to 100037. This will begin with address 32 due to the offset of one. Analog input values will begin at 40001 and output values at 40011. Uh, this will start at 0 and 10 due to, the, again, the offset. Select the OK button. You will now see the inputs and outputs specified for the Modbus driver. We can manually assign the driver outputs to the PLC inputs and the driver inputs to the PLC outputs. However, the automatic assignment works well and will save you time. Select Automatic Assignment from the Driver option in the main menu. This will automatically assign the PLC I.O. to the Machine Simulator I.O. Select Start Driver and exit from the main menu. On the bottom left side of the window, you will see the driver communicates to the PLC with a green light. Select View I.O. to know the input and output status of the Machine Simulator. Ensure that the PLC is in run mode. We can now see the operation of our Easy PLC solder robot. The digital inputs and outputs of the MS will correspond to the PLC controller. Using Machine Simulator to test the program will ensure that our program works. Use the time speed to speed up the robot welder. Test for all circumstances. If modifications are required, we can easily go back to the previous step and correct them. We can also watch the inputs and output operations using the, the data view window of the Click PLC programming software. Now here are some challenges for you and this easy PLC solder robot simulation. This will help you to develop your PLC programming skills. Number one, add a start stop control panel to the simulation. Number two, count the number of boxes welded and calculate the welding time. Let me know how you made out, made out in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to hit the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.